Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to focus on understanding the benefits of single page applications. After that, in this initial section of the course, we are going to focus on adding the router to our application, starting with the basics. We are going to set up some initial routing configuration. We are going to explain the most essential concepts of the Angular router, such as router configuration and router outlets. And we are going to add a home page to our screen, as well as a couple of other extra routes for the about screen and the login page. We are going to set up a home route and a page not found route so we are going to start with the most essential tasks that you need to do in any Angular application when you are just getting started with the router. So our current application has no routing capabilities yet. Let's then get started in this lesson by understanding what is exactly a single page application, why is it named like that, and what are the benefits of even wanting to turn our application into a single page application. What do we get by adopting that specific architecture? What are the benefits? What are the downsides, if any? The best way to understand what is a single page application is to see one in action when compared with a traditional multi-page application. Let's then switch here to a larger window where we are going to have here in our first tab a traditional multi-page application that you are familiar with, it's Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a traditional multi-page application, so whenever we hit a URL in Wikipedia, in this case the one for Angular, we are going to load a specific page from the server. So if we inspect here the page source, we are going to see here all the HTML that we got from the server for this particular page. As we can see, the Wikipedia application has no front-end rendering at all. All the HTML is generated on the server. If we go back here to the Angular page and we click in one of the links, for example, the link to the previous framework version, AngularJS, we are going to see that even though the page loaded very fast, this was a completely separate HTML page. So if we hit here back and we click again, notice here the loading indicator of the browser showing that indeed we are fetching a new page from the server. If we now inspect here the source of the page using view page source, we are going to see that indeed the source code that we got from the server is completely different than the one that we got for the Wikipedia Angular page. This means that the Wikipedia application is a traditional web application with multiple pages getting loaded from the server. Every transition in the application via a link results in the loading of a new page from the backend. Let's now compare this traditional multi-page application to a single page application. We have an example of a single page application running here, which is the home page of the Angular IO website itself. So all the documentation website of Angular is built with Angular itself and it's a good example of a single page application running in production. As we can see, if we scroll down, this page has a lot of HTML content. But if we right click here and we click on view page source, we're going to be surprised to see that this source page actually contains very little HTML. So compare this to what we saw in the case of the Angular Wikipedia page. We can see that most of the page does not contain any HTML at all. We have here a series of link tags in order to load resources such as images or CSS style sheets. We have here a couple of meta tags. We can see here a couple of Google Analytics scripts for third party applications. And if we scroll down to the main content of the page itself, we are going to be surprised to see that there is almost nothing in this page. This is essentially an empty page from an HTML standpoint. We can see here at the bottom the script tags containing the JavaScript loaded into this page and all the content of this page is contained inside this application shell HTML tag which is not a standard HTML tag. This is a custom HTML element. So what is going on here exactly? This source code that we see here using the view page source feature of our browser is the actual page that was loaded from the server. So this is what we got over the network. 
as we can see it's essentially an empty page. The question then is where is this HTML coming from that we see on the page? So if we inspect now the page using the Chrome Dev Tools, we're going to see that as expected we have here a series of HTML elements. So where is all this content coming from if it didn't came from the server under the source page itself? Well, all this content was generated by JavaScript on the client side. So how did this happen? The application started, we got our page from the server that we saw here on the view page source view. The Angular framework was then loaded via a JavaScript tag. The framework bootstrapped itself onto the page and took control of the page. There was a request made to the backend to retrieve the data needed to display here this text that we see here on the screen and the Angular framework on the client side then apply that text fetched from the server into the page. But the text that we see here did not arrive in the initial request. The initial request simply loaded here an empty HTML page with a series of JavaScript tags including the Angular framework and then the Angular framework took care of this essentially empty page it fetched the content that it needed from the server under the form of data and not HTML and then it applied the content to the page. This means that all our front-end page is being managed by JavaScript. So what are the advantages of adopting this approach? Well, let's start navigating in the application and compare the user experience. So if we click here on the documentation website or on the resources tab, on the events tab, we can see that we are transitioning almost instantly between the multiple pages of the application. This is very different from a traditional multi-page application where when we transition between pages of the application we have here a loading indicator and the user has to wait for a new page to be fetched from the server in order to continue to interact with the application. Fetching new pages from the server each time might slow down the user experience when compared to this approach here of this single page application where we remain on the same page that was initially loaded from the server and it's JavaScript that takes care of applying new content to the central part of the page whenever we click here in one of the links and change the content of our URL. Notice how even though the content of the URL changes, no loading indicator is shown here to the user and we remain always on the same page that we have loaded initially from the backend. Because when we navigate through the application we are still on the same page, this explains the name single page application. Now our question is what if we hit here the refresh button in our browser? Let's have a look at the HTML that we get back from the backend. We're going to hit refresh, as expected we get to the same page and now let's click here on view page source. As we can see, if we scroll down, we get the exact same, essentially empty HTML page from the server containing only this application shell custom HTML element. This means that no matter which page we try to fetch from the angular.io website, independently of the URL that we type in the browser, we always get back from the server the same empty HTML page. So this is another reason why this is called a single page application. We always get exactly the same page from the server and when we navigate through the application after it has been bootstrapped on the client, we remain in the same HTML page on the front end as well. As we can see, the behavior of the page is completely different than the one of a traditional multi-page application. So the question is, what are the advantages of adopting a single page application architecture? One of the main advantages that we can point out for building our application as a single page application is the ability to provide our users a much better user experience. Look how fast the transition between pages is as the user navigates through the application. Another advantage is that we have potentially a much simpler backend to build. So our single page application is querying a REST API 
So our single page application is typically served statically as static files. So the page itself, the single page of the application and the HTML and the CSS bundles. And then the front end client that we have here running is going to do calls to typically a REST API in our backend. So in our backend, we don't have to have a server rendering pages using a specifically server side technology, such as, for example, PHP or any other type of similar technology. We can have a very simple static server for serving the single page application and the other static assets of the application. And we can have a simple REST API next to it in order to deliver the content that the application needs. This could be text, such as, for example, what we have here. This could be a JSON payload containing, for example, a list of courses, like it's the case of the sample application that we are about to build. So in general, the backend of a single page application tends to be a bit simpler. All we need is a static server and a simple REST API, for example. In summary, the advantages of using a single page application architecture is an improved user experience and an improvement in perceived performance. If we now switch back to our sample application, we are going to find the single page of our application here under the source folder. Here it is. It's the index.html page. And this is the single page of our application. As we can see in our case, it's a completely empty HTML page. We only have here the title meta tag. We have here a couple of links in order to load resources, such as, for example, the Roboto found, a couple of material icons. But other than that, all the application that we see running here and that we are going to build throughout the rest of the course is contained inside this app root Angular component. Now, what are the potential downsides of building our application as a single page application? Well, there aren't many. It's usually a much better way of building front ends, giving to the user a much better user experience in general. The only downside today that you could think of for building an application as a single page application is that this type of applications, if they are not server side rendered, then they will not be indexed properly by certain search engines. The main search engine, the Google search engine, has no problem indexing JavaScript pages. For example, any result that you query on the Google search engine for documentation of the Angular framework is going to be correctly caught up and indexed by the Google search engine without any problem, even though it comes from a single page application. Other search engines, however, such as, for example, at the date of recording of this course, the Bing search engine will not be able to index single page applications properly. However, this small inconvenience is not applicable to the vast majority of contexts where we are using single page applications. Typically, we are building this type of applications as enterprise private applications that only exist in a private network, or we are building the dashboard part of an internet product where the user has to log in first before accessing the service that is payable, for example, via a membership. As we can see, the benefits of using a single page application far outweigh this minor downside for the vast majority of use cases, which are enterprise applications and private dashboards not accessible in the public internet anyway. So going back here to our sample application, here is what we are about to do in the next few lessons. We are going to set up the router from scratch and we are going to explain its essential concepts. From that starting point, we are going to cover further on in the course all the advanced features of the Angular router, including lazy loading and also auxiliary routes, among many other features of the Angular router.